We appear weak to the world, but are mighty in the eyes of the Most High. Shalom to all the prophets and prophetess. I want to give all the honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rawacha, Kodash. Double honors to my elders at Great Millstone, taught when this truth through the Spirit, singing honors to the Yalet. Peace and blessings be to all the sincere men and women and children that do consist of the one third, and to the confusion that faces in the four corners of the earth. Shalom. Concerning you so called Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans, on the world stage, we dead last. Dead last, the Lord said, We will be the tail. And Edom, the head, he's a nation that's ruling over us according to prophecy. He's the head. And regardless of how talented we are, all the things we've invented and how we like keep a miracle pretty much stand afloat. Man, we, we looked at as the dregs of society. We looked at as the scum of the earth, uh, the bottom of someone's shoe, right? But the men of the Lord, they see us out there and they don't acknowledge us as being someone of renown or someone who knows the scriptures or someone who knows the Bible because we didn't go to a school of theology or, you know, we wasn't in their classrooms. We didn't have a teacher. We wasn't um, approved by men. But see, the beautiful thing of the Lord, the Lord chose the weak things to destroy those which they think are actually strong. So with that being said, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27 through 29. But God, Yahweh, have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Look at our people as a whole. I'm talking about our women walk around with their hair looking like the color of Skittles, right? Walking around with pajamas on. The men walk around with their pants hanging all off their ass. Their hair is longer than the women. They're more feminine than the women. Right? They are weak. Like the scripture says, men, um, men run out of wits for women. Right? Women are more masculine. The men are more submissive. The children have no respect for their elders in general or for anyone. Look at how, they, look at how these students talking to Deion Sanders. That's a grown man. Let alone one of our people. But that's another story. Right? So we looked at as the foolish of the world, man. The things that we do. The Lord chose us, his people, to confound the wise. Meaning like they look at like look at vocab alone, look at all the other scholars. They see us out on the corner. They oh, look at those guys out there with those dresses on. Ha <laughs> ha. Laughing. Kiki ha ha. Uncultured. Not these people are not cultured. They don't know. Right? We look foolish to them, but like the Lord said, by the foolishness of preaching to save those that believe. So in the eyes of the world, we look foolish, but in the eyes of the Lord, we're wise. So let me read this again so you can understand where I'm going. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27 to 29. But God have chosen the foolish things of the world, us, to confound the wise. This is in the eyes of the people, what I'm saying. And God have chosen the weak things of the world, in the eyes of the world we appear to be weak and beggarly, to confound the things that are mighty. Exactly. That's what the Lord's doing now. How, how, did, how did Pharaoh fall? The Lord used Moses. Come on. Come on. Verse 28. And base things of the earth, I'm sorry, of the world, got excited, and things which are despised, have God chosen? We've been despised. Who care for us? Who fighting for us? Who think about us? No one. We won't even think about our damn selves. We, we'll put the heathen before our own. Come on. And things which are not to bring to not things that are. That no flesh shall glory in his presence. See, they're looking on the outward appearance. They don't know anything about the inward parts. This is highly spiritual. That's why I always say 
the bond to the elders, I love those men. I never even physically met those men. But it's the spirit that's inside those men that compel me to continue to go forward. Like Speaking about faith, right? Because they look at those men, they, oh, look at these old ass men out here. Yeah, they, man, those are mighty men. Ancient men, right? So the scripture says, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. And people don't even really read the next verse. The next verse says, by this, the elders obtained a good report. That's a very heavy portion of that. Because you look at those men, but the glory that those men possess is spiritual. We're going to get into it. Let's keep going. Lamentation chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. All that passed by clapped their hands at thee. This is talking about how the nations appear. Um, see us. When they, this, is how the, when, when, this is how the nations view us in their eyes. Let me just say that. All that passed by clapped their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem. Saying, is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty? The joy of the whole earth? So what we're saying, we're the children of God. We're the royal nation. People look at us and be like, you? There ain't no way in the world. Okay, look at the curses according to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and so forth and so forth. Oh, we appear to be more and more like those people. But at the end of the day, they still view us as nothing. It's going to take for the Lord to come back. So, where is it? Um, is it Sarat? Is it Sarat, the second chapter? I think it's Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter. Where it speaks about, um, let us let us use the creatures. And it says that he claimed to be the son of God. Let us let us test that or let us see if, if, if he is. You know, pretty much how they're saying, like, we're contrary to their life because we claim to be the righteous and we're condemning the wicked. All right, I forgot exactly where that was at, but pretty much, so th that's how they look at us. Verse 16, all thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They say we have swallowed her up. Look at us right now, post-slavery. Certainly, this is the day that we looked for. We have found, we have seen it. So the condition that we're in is prophetic. Because it goes back to the curses the Lord was going to bestow upon us for not keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Bible, which is sin. And the, def the definition of sin is to transgress the law, which the law was only given to the nation of Israel. So only the Israelites would be the ones being, con I, want, I want to say condemned, or the ones that's being chastised, whooped, because we're the Lord's children. That's why we're going through it. So Esau putting us into slavery, that was supposed to happen. But then the Lord's going to also punish you for doing that. Did not the Lord say he heartened Pharaoh's heart to, to, pretty much to show his power? The Lord chose the bases of men to rule over the earth that was created for our sakes to show his power. And like the Lord said, pride has deceived thee. So your pride is right before your destruction, which is soon to follow. Yet again, in your pride, it still has deceived you and not one to believe that we are the children of Israel as a whole. But it's, it's, coming, it's coming around that you're starting to come to the fruition that you can't deny it anymore. Well, if you can't deny that, well, you better not deny this ass whooping that's coming to down the pipeline. Forgive me, y'all. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> but nonetheless, though, right? Lamentations 2 and 17. The Lord have done that which he had devised. It was supposed to happen. Yeah, he hath fulfilled his word that he hath had commanded in the days of old. What the Lord told to Jeremiah, the Lord said, "Thou, even thine self, shall discontinue from thine heritage." And Jeremiah is here with us today, Yeramia. That's his name, Yeramia in Hebrew. That's how you say it. Shalom to the um, beloved brother Yeramia Kabar. So anyhow, certainly. This is the, don't forgive me, I apologize. The Lord have done that which he had devised. He hath fulfilled his word that he had commanded in the days of old. He hath thrown down and hath not pitied. 
and he have caused thine enemy to rejoice over thee. He have set up the horn of thine adversaries. The horn, horn is is a um sign of strength. The Lord set them up. <laughs> That's why the scripture says, and Job, I think it's Job twelve, the deceived and the deceiver are his. He you said you've been duped. But see, we're supposed to appear weak and beggarly because the Lord, God is a spirit, John 4, and we worship him in spirit and truth, which is why we out there with the scriptures. You can come with your AMRAPs, you can come with your lethal weapons, you can come with your, your, your guard dogs and your armor trucks, that's fine. You're supposed to. You've been blessed with the sword, but we've been blessed with the spirit. There, there's no weapon you can create to fight a spirit. Remember that. So anyhow, you saw prepare. <laughs> so Rock chapter 10, verse 4 through 5. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. Right? So as of right now, we appear weak to the world, but are mighty in the eyes of the Most High. Because we know how they say he got the whole world in his hand. Come on now. <laughs> y'all seen the end. Y'all, I know it's a fictional movie. But you seen the end of Man in Black, right? Remember where they said something about it's on Orion's belt. And I think Orion was the cat. And remember on the, at the end when they zoomed in to the, the emblem that was on the cat's um, belt on his neck. It showed a universe inside of a universe inside of a universe. And it showed like this big alien holding a marble in his hand. You know, they try to be fictional. But the Lord God is everything. Yahweh is everything. Right? So, if the earth was given to the hands of the wicked. And the Lord clearly says that the saints shall take the kingdom. So yeah, when you see us saying that, it's like, and and you see, we got to stand in line to go get food and water. We got to pay bills to you, and, and y'all had us in in barns sleeping with animals, and you, you was raping us and burning us, and 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 use us for target practice and for experiments. And y'all, I mean, y'all got to think about this. How do you think we know what kidneys and all this stuff look like, and how the human body can withstand this and withstand that? We were the projects. We were the test subject. So they, they look at us as cattle. They look at us as nothing. And they and now we're telling them we're God chosen people, we're gonna put them in slavery. In their mind, they can't fathom it. Right? But the Lord is gonna put us back in our rightful spot. So Rock 10 and 5. In the hand of God, Yahweh, is the prosperity of man. And upon the person of the scribe shall he lay his honor. Let that seek in. So who is honorable in the in the eyes of the Lord? The scribes, us, the prophets. The Lord laid honor upon us. So though we appear weak in the eyes of them, we mighty in the eyes of the Lord because he placed honor upon us because John 3 and 27, if I'm not mistaken, it says, um, all things are, what is it? Nothing is given to man except to be given from heaven. Some to that extent, forgive me for butchering it. So we know the Lord has all the power. And he chose us who appear weak and beggarly in the, in the sight of the nations to do his bidding. But nonetheless, though, they're going to find out sooner or later. I hope sooner. And I'm going to close out with this. First John chapter 3, verse 1 through 2. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. That's heavy. Israel literally means son of God. Prince, I'm sorry, prince of the power. Prince of God. We're princes. All right? And the women of our nation are princesses. As of right now, they look like goddamn monsters. But uh, I, I only pray for the uh, the elect women. That fit you how about Shem All the other ones they can kick rocks with no shoes. Anyhow, first John three, one through two. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. 
So if I wanted to really get a better understanding of Elvis Presley, I will read his biography, right? So I can get to know him. What do they say? Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. None of these shall fail. So you look down on us because they don't really know God. Because if you really knew God, you would know that he put his people into captivity for being disobedient. But prior to CV, you thought you did it yourself, huh? Right. Nonetheless, verse 2, and I'm closing out. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, Yahweh Shai, big brother, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And last time I checked, according to Isaiah 47 and 3, Lord said, he shall not meet thee as a man. So, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. So, those who appear to be weak in your eyes, oh, you're going to come to realize the Lord going to turn it all up. He's going to turn it upside down on you. What is it on color purple? It's going to rain on your head. <laughs> Prophecy and judgment at that. But with that being said, peace at five fed. Stay in the spirit, no fear, just endure it. Ask for forgiveness, pray without ceasing. Stay humble, remain diligent. Quamasha Allah, Muflaba Ball, Shalom.